Good morning, Northside, and welcome today. Happy Boxing Day. Today is a, is a special service uh, where we thank the Lord for all the blessings we've received in the last year. Pastor Steve will tell us more about how we plan to share, but I wanted to tell you that I'm looking forward to sharing myself personally and hearing all good things that God has done for us. We're going to start off today with a very fitting song. Thank you, Lord. But before we sing it, I've got a prayer for today. Father, thank you for all the blessings you have given to each of us this year. These blessings are either in response to our prayers or blessings that align with your plans for each of us. These blessings enable us to share the news that you are alive and with us always. Give us the strength to share this good news outside church to our family, friends, colleagues, and those that you bring along our path in life that need to hear the good news. Please be with us today as we share how you have blessed each of us and allow us all praise to your name. We love you, Lord, and look forward to the day we see your face to face, see you face to face in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand as we sing, Thank You, Lord. Thank 
you, everybody. That's our welcome sign. You can be seated. Pastor Steve is going to introduce us to today's message and how we're going to proceed. Go ahead, Steve. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Oh, come on. I know you're over full from turkey dinners or all kinds of meals last night. Maybe barely able to get yourself out of bed this morning, but I think we can do better. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, much better. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, um, a little birdie told me today that it's somebody's special birthday. I won't get her in trouble, but her name is Michaela. Um, <laughs> and it's her grandma's birthday today. Right, Carol? Carol, some of us might not know who you are, but do you feel comfortable standing up so we can see you and sing happy birthday? It is Carol's, can I say it? 75th birthday today. Woohoo! <clears throat> so let's sing. Ready to go? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Carol. Happy birthday to you. And many more. There we go. There's my bass. <laughs> Carol, just, just one question. What do you do to look so young? Oh, there we go. I'm in her good books now. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> You'll be 85 tomorrow? Wow. Okay. Well, hey, let's another celebration. Ready? His name is George, in case you don't know. Happy birthday. That's awesome. What a way to start off this morning. Yeah, and this morning's going to be a little bit different. And, uh, and I'm inviting all of you on Zoom and on YouTube. You're going to be able to get involved with this morning as well. This is our last Sunday together of 2021. Anybody feel like this year has just flown by? Nobody? Okay. <laughs> I feel like it has. I mean, when I started off this year, I was 25. I'm now 50. <laughs> 52, something happened. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so this morning, I want to do something a little bit different. And please hold the applause, but I'm not going to be preaching a message this morning. Okay, no applause. Sarah, I saw that. <laughs> Instead, this morning, we're going to be the message. This morning, the church will be the message rather than the pastor. And I want to focus, I want to lead us into focusing on a story in Scripture in Luke chapter 8. That will lead us into our time together. Have you ever read a story in the Bible that you've read a hundred times over and you go, okay, I know the plot line. I know how it starts. I know what's going to happen throughout it. I know how it's going to end. You just know how the story is going to go. So sometimes you skim over that story. But then there's times where you read that story for the hundredth time and something jumps out at you. You've read it before, but it just jumps out of you in that moment. Maybe you've never seen it before. Maybe it just never clicked before. But there's something that jumped out at you. And when I read this story in Luke chapter 8 just a couple of weeks ago, I've read this story many times before. And there's something that just jumped out at me that I haven't seen before. It just made sense. It was something that God was getting my attention on. And I believe that this morning, God wants to get our attention on with it as well. In your Bibles, in Luke chapter 8, it's got, that passage I'm going to read to you, the story I read to you, is called, in some Bibles, it's called the healing of the demon-possessed man, or the healing of the demoniac. There's different titles given, depending on what Bible you have, NIV, NLT, ESV, there's different versions. And <clears throat> this story, uh, let me preface it by giving you a little bit of a context. <clears throat> Just before this story, Jesus tells his disciples, let's all get in the boat and go, go over to the other side, the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And they're all in the boat together, and if you remember this storyline a little bit, there's a massive storm that is happening, and Jesus is just sleeping at the wheel, so to speak. He's just resting, all calm and peaceful, even in the midst of this massive storm that is going all around. The disciples are all afraid, and they're going, Jesus, don't you care? And they wake him up, and you of little faith, and he calms the storm. 
Then the second they land on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, they're welcomed, so to speak, by this demoniac. This man, we don't know his age, is just coming screaming at him. You can almost picture the scene. This is a man that has been terrorizing the townspeople. They've been afraid of him. They tried whatever they can to shackle him, to hold him down, but nothing can hold him down. We're told that in fact that he is possessed by many demons. This guy has no hope in life to have any kind of normal life at all. He's been trying to hurt himself, harm himself, I'm sure, harming others, scaring others. And then we pick up the story where Jesus encounters this man, tells the demons to get lost, go to the pigs up on a hill. The demons go to the pigs and they run them over the cliff and all these pigs drown. Listen to what happens next in Luke chapter 8. <clears throat> starting in verse 34. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got in the boat and returned. Folks, notice here what the townspeople, what the city people were focusing on. They were focusing on all the wrong things. Here's a man that was terrorizing their city. Their kids were not safe to go to school and back. Maybe they didn't know what was going to happen to their kids. Who knows? They were living in terror all the time. Doors were always locked, whatever it may be. And now they find this man in his right mind, clothed, calm, with a smile on his face. And what do they choose to focus on instead? We lost all these pigs. They're drowned, our livelihood, whatever it may be. We chose to focus on the bad instead of the good. <clears throat> I wonder if this past year, it's been easy sometimes to have our minds and hearts focused on the bad and forget all that God has done, the good in our lives. But we're not going to forget this morning because listen to what happens next. Verse 38, the man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with Jesus, but Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. And this is my heart's desire this morning. That today, the last Sunday of 2021, we would declare all that God has done in our lives. In our lives personally, in our lives as a family, in our workplaces, in and through the church. Even this morning, I'm looking at who's walking in through these doors. <laughs> Betty. Betty Hagley. Betty is, and Roger are a dear couple in this church. Betty has not missed the church service since she was knee-high to a grasshopper. And for the past maybe six or seven weeks, she's not been feeling well. She's been feeling really weak. I've talked to her on the phone. She wants to come to church. She longs to be here amongst us and worship with us. And she wasn't sure when she'd be able to come again because she's not feeling well. And Betty just walked through these doors and sitting in a church. Service. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Declare all that God has done. Betty, welcome. Welcome back. So good to see you, my dear. So good to see you. So this morning, this morning, I'm going to be inviting each of you to declare what the Lord has done. And I'll let you know, we did this as a board just a few weeks ago. I shared this story just a few weeks ago with the board. And we probably spent about, Jim, uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, easily declaring what the Lord has done. And um, 
and I don't know what God's going to share through your hearts and minds this morning, but one of the things that I said to the board is, I don't know about you, but I forget what happened last week. Anybody can relate? <laughs> right? So I'm going to open up in prayer, and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to bring to our hearts and minds what God has done in this past 11, 12 months of 2021. And I'm going to share with you how it's going to flow this morning as well, and how you online can get involved as well. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for this story. I thank you that even just this past Friday night, Christmas Eve, we talked about Jesus, the first message you declared and shared publicly. And the message was from Isaiah 61. I've come to set the captives free. And here we read a story of how you came to set this young man free from being oppressed and in bondage for so long and gave him his life back again. And the townspeople, the people in the city focus on all the wrong things. And Jesus told the young man, go back to the city. Declare to everyone what the Lord has done. So this morning, we all have a story. We all have something we can share that you have done in 2021 in our lives. Even in the midst of the challenges and struggles, you have done great things. So remind us of them. Remind us of them so we can celebrate and give you the glory and praise that you deserve. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Amen. So here's how it's going to happen, okay? Totally relaxed, informal time. You see, I'm just sitting down and just comfortable here. When you're reminded of what God has done in your life this past year, declare it. It could be something small. It could be something big. Nothing's too small. Nothing's too big. Declare it. It could take like 30 seconds or it could take 30 minutes. Although if it's 30 minutes, I might cut you at three. All right, so we have other people that can share as well, uh, too. And can I encourage you? Some of you might be totally afraid of public speaking. I get that. Believe it or not, I was too. Okay, totally petrified of public speaking. Don't look at it as public speaking. Look at it as just sharing what God has done so that we can hear the story of God's movement in your life and celebrate with you and be encouraged together with you. I love this verse. It says, verse Thessalonians 5.11, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, as in fact you are doing. If God reminds you of something, you want to share something, please push aside the fear and just share. And we'd love to celebrate with you. You can share from right there where you're sitting, uh, where is Jimmy? There's Jim. Jim has a roaming mic. He's going to wipe it down every time somebody handles this. So we're taking that protocol and measure. And you can speak right into the microphone, right from where you are, so that people online can hear and we can all hear as well. But also we have a microphone right at the front. If you want your 15 second of fame and you want to come up to the front, you're welcome to come to the front so that people as well online can see who it is that is speaking. Uh, that would be awesome. Right here, the microphone is there as well. I've already asked a few people if they'd be ready to share, so they're ready this morning to share. But please do share all that the Lord has done. And if you're online, and you're watching on Zoom, and you want to declare what the Lord has done, just raise your hand, whatever it may be, get Peter's attention. He's watching you online, and he'll unmute you so we can hear it. He'll wave his hand saying he's got somebody that wants to share. He'll unmute you, and then uh, you'll be able, we'll be able to hear what you have to share as well from online, too. Um, and if you're on uh, YouTube, uh, we can't hear you, but the comment section should be live, ready to go. You can write in your comments, and then Peter can share it out loud for us to hear as well. So we can all engage, all of us at the front here as well, with declaring what the Lord has done. All right? And also throughout this time together, totally relaxed time, Scott, as our worship leader, whenever he feels led to lead us into some singing, he'll lead us into some singing. Whether you want to stay seated, whether you want to stand up, you're welcome to do that. And we're going to sing songs of celebration and worship songs to our Lord, th just flowing throughout this time together. All right? And if you have any Bible verses you want to share, you can share Bible verses as well that have been speaking to you this past year. Would be awesome too. So let us 
Let me get going here. Let us get started while you're processing all of this right now. I have lots that I can declare. Lots. But I don't know about you. This past year, like never before in my life, and like I said, I'm 25 years old, so I haven't had a long life. <laughs> I have felt tired numerous times. Uh, exhausted, drained, uh, depressed. I'm not one to feel depressed, um, but I have. Uh, frustrated, all kinds of emotions. Uh, there are times where I'm, I'm working away here at the office or I work from home sometimes. I just have nothing in me to give at all. And it's in those moments I just kind of cry out to God. I say, God, I, this is on you. I, I need your help. I need your help. And wouldn't you know it? God failed me over and over again. <laughs> no, he didn't. Over and over again, God gave me just the right amount of strength to keep going. Over and over again, at just the right time, he moved my depressiveness into a time of rejoicing. Whether it be maybe I received an encouraging phone call at just the right time, or a text, or whatever it may be, he just did lift me up. Maybe it was in the morning. I often do my devotions in the morning just on my own, got the coffee ready, and I'm reading the Bible, journaling and stuff like that, and there's something that jumps out from the Word of God. Or especially, especially, I don't care how tired or exhausted I feel, or how distracted I am, or how depressed I might feel. I come here on a Sunday morning, and we start singing songs. I don't know if this happens to you, but man, my spirit is lifted up in just amazing ways when we sing songs. It takes my focus off of this other stuff and puts my focus back on God. And this past year too, I'm telling you right now, we have a great team of elders and ministry leaders at Northside. Just a great team. And this past couple of years, we've worked together as a team of elders, as a board, ministry team leaders who have made quick adjustments Sometimes on the fly, because Sunday morning I had an idea, and, they, and uh, they just made it happen. And I'm just so thankful for this great team. So this year, in the midst of all of the different things that I've felt, that I've not felt in such a condensed period of time, God has helped me overcome it. And um, Isaiah 41.10 stood out for me. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. Who else wants to declare what the Lord has done? Who's going to be the second person up to share what the Lord? It can be short, it can be long. We want to give thanks to God. Sorry. Yes. Oh. Okay, there we go. <laughs> well, so that people online can hear you and also that Betty can hear you too. When you were mentioning there that Jesus calmed the storm, the gentleman was sitting beside me, Peter Sam, he calmed me. About four years ago, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I went home and the doctor diagnosed me. He said, I had a good crack. But he said, Mr. Adams, we're going to treat you for five days a week. For eight weeks, I went for radiation. Last year he called about, I guess, two months ago now, and he said, Mr. Adams, things are really looking good. You might only have to go once a year for these tests. But I thank God every day is a gift from God. And we start our day reading the daily bread, and now I think we've read it for I don't know how many years. And when I was working, sometimes that daily bread just brought what I needed. And uh, other times it's just normal reading, but uh, we've read different, different interpretations of the Bible. And still time, I'm having trouble grasping some of these things, but I still find that the old King James Version is still <laughs> one of the easiest ones to remember some of these verses. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, George. And thank you, Sam, for being a good friend. Absolutely. We need those kinds of people in our lives that can encourage us and bless us and help us in our times of need. Absolutely. 
Anybody else want to declare what the Lord has done in your life so we can celebrate together? Yes, right over there. Just give us your name, too, so we can all know, because you yeah. just started attending the past few weeks, you and your family. Yes, uh, I'm John. Hi, John. Um, <laughs> not going to echo. <laughs> um, so, uh, this year, is, it's, been, it's, it's been rough, right? Everybody's been rough. Um, I've, I've had a rough 20 years. Uh, and uh, this is my first month of sobriety in, uh, in 19 years. So, uh, I've... I've, I've there's days where it's, it's hard, it's rough when you're used to doing something before every single activity you've ever done. Um, but praying has made me feel calm, taking away my anxiety, reading different verses in the Bible and giving me different advice and things like that and help me be a better father and a better husband. Uh, and I, I thank God and Jesus for that. Amen. Thank you, John. Yes. I met John in the office uh, three weeks ago now, John? And uh, John's been watching us on YouTube and uh, for a little couple times. And uh, he said he sent me an email um, through our website. And uh, I said, John, I'd love to connect with you face to face, either after church on Sunday or this week before Sunday, because they wanted to come. And uh, so they actually, John was saying that the kids were watching and going, wow, look, they have a full band. <laughs> wow, you know, so. Uh, so John and I met in the office and uh, man, John, uh, you know, there's just some people that just come into your life and there's just an overwhelming love uh, for them. And I love each and every one of you. And I just, just barely met John and there was just, just an overwhelming love for you, man. And met your whole family and uh, Melissa and Delilah and Aubrey and Charlotte. And uh, I said it right, right? Okay, good. <laughs> And so it's good to have you as part of the church family, and uh, thank you for sharing, John. Anybody else want to declare what the Lord has done in 2021? Oh, right there. Ahead, come, on, come right up to the microphone here. Come on right over here so we can see your lovely face. There we go. Blessings. Blessing to you. I'm going to try not to be emotional. <laughs> they come big and small. I've had both. It's been a challenging year for me, for sure. Um, however, part of the challenge is making decisions, decisions that I've had to make on my own, which I haven't had to do before decisions but the Lord has placed people in my midst I'm so thankful for that that help or suggest help on a few examples I had this humongous tree in my backyard that was rotting and was going to fall on the neighbor's property and my neighbor suggested I should cut it down Okay, what am I going to do? How am I going to do that? So he gave me a name of an arborist who came in a month's time and got that tree cut down before those strong winds came, or God would have blown it down with those strong winds, I'm sure. With only one mishap, one humongous branch did fall on the neighbors. But I was thankful for that. I was thankful for my neighbor that helped out in so many ways which was new to me. And then my roof needed some work on it. What do I get to do that? So I got a hold of a fellow that, no, he couldn't do it, but he suggested someone else that would do it. Oh, good, so he came. While he was up on the roof, he said, your chimney needs some work done on it. How am I gonna get to do that? Well, he suggested someone else so I got that looked after. And then the month of November is leaves, raking leaves. We have two big maple trees in the front yard, and every day I'm out there raking leaves. But my neighbor across the road 
whenever she would see me out there, she would come and she would help. She would say, it's just for the exercise. Okay. <laughs> I got to know both of these neighbors, the ones behind and the one across the road along the way. And that's been a blessing as well. I'm so thankful for them. And then there's the technical difficulties that come along. I don't know what to do. Well, my dear brother-in-law, Bob, helps me with that. And he's uh, been so ready to help whenever. And then there's the prayer warriors in my family and friends. I have a dear friend that's in her late 80s. She tells me she prays for me every day. What a blessing that is. I have a dear sister-in-law. She's in her 90s. She prays for me every day. She keeps in touch with me, whether it's through email or phone call every month. And we share, and I can share anything and everything with her. Such a blessing. My family, my siblings, They've been so supportive. I just need to call them, and they're there to help, whether it's Helen that sends me some soup or somebody else that comes to help with yard work. Some of these things may seem very small, but to me, they're wonderful. They're, they're so important, and I'm so thankful. I'm constantly thanking the Lord for his provision and grateful for the many blessings. And through this Christmas as well, just so many blessings, little things, big things that have um, been so rewarding and so wonderful. One of the songs that we're going to sing is Faithful One. Mm. And some of the words in it is, I cry out to you again and again, which I have done this past year and a half frequently, but the Lord always meets my need, whether it's through a neighbor, through <coughs> family, through help. Just so thankful. Many blessings. Thank you, Jean. Thank, Thank you, Jean. Jean. Oh. <laughs> you gave a nice segue into Faithful one. Hey. Are you able to play? It was an emotional a testimony, so. Yes. <laughs> but uh, it would be good if, if we could do that since uh, this is a strong song that uh, inspires all of us and that we know and trust that God is, is there for us always.
God, I know you have a couple of things you'd love to share. Yeah. Do you want to come to this microphone yeah, there so they can sure. see you? There we go. Well, church family, I want to give you an opportunity an insight of some of my blessings that I've had in the past year. My life is a challenging one, okay? Um, I'm getting on the high side of, of my career and... Uh, it's a difficult job that I have. I work in IT. And uh, what happens is I'm working, I'm testing things, but to get that environment going and so on, I have problems day to day where I don't know what the solution is. And every time I hit a problem, a snag where I can't solve it myself, what I do is I, I say a prayer. I pray and I say, Father, please help me with this. Give me insight in what I need to do. Or bring me, bring me help from others around me that will find a solution. And you know, I work away, I have confidence and trust, and then suddenly an idea pops in my head. It's either an idea to follow up with to solve the problem, or it's an idea of a person that I should be speaking to. And every single time I'm blessed with solving my problem. And it's usually, this, these are quick things, these are prayers with a response within half an hour maybe, or even less sometimes. So day to day, I'm really uh, benefiting from God in my life for, at work. But I wanted to tell you about my experience with COVID because um, not that I've had it, but just that when it started in 2020, um, I found I got very depressed. Um, I was feeling sad. I was working at home. My wife was at home, um, but I, I missed my friends. I reached out to some of them. I don't have a large friend network, but I reached out to some of them and chatted, but it wasn't enough. I gained a lot of my support from my workers, my coworkers, and the people that I'm, I'm around day to day. And when I'm missing that, working from home, I wasn't getting that. So I prayed to God. I said, God, I, I need companionship and friendship. And I started to go walking regularly through the neighborhood. We have a dog and it needs a lot of exercise. And I would go for walks, morning, noon, and, and at night. And you know what? I met, I would say, about five or six families on my street or nearby that were open to the idea of, you know, being friendly and, and sharing experiences and, and sharing love, basically. This has made a big difference in my life. Every time I go out now, I, have, I bump into somebody that's my family, and I know that that's, it's an answered prayer that, that, that this uh, occurred and that I brought these people into my life and is even continuing to this day. There is something I want to share that is a prayer answered for both my wife and I. Mm. My son, Jeffrey, okay, he dated a girl in high school and all the way through university, so probably six, <clears throat> six years maybe. And they, there was wedding bells on the fore, for, forefront and in the future. And that's how he felt about it. And he was going to do his career based on, you know, big income because that, that's what he was going for. And unfortunately, she decided to um, break up with him. And this was a, 
a devastating moment for him. He was depressed for several years, I think. And he got over it, and he had trouble getting started with his career post-university. He got a uh, university from Guelph, University of Guelph, uh, in economics and finance, and he did well with that. He's a smart young man. But he didn't want to go into that, because the whole thing that he was going to do with his old girlfriend, uh, fiance potentially, was about you know, being in business and making lots of money and so on. So he decided, what, what, what gives me the most joy in life? And it was nature and working hard. So he decided to become a tree planter. Mm. And now he's planted now for about four years. He's 29, turning, he's turning 30 in, in uh, January. And uh, his spirits are lifted and He's a very competitive person, so he goes out and when he goes and plants trees, he's tre they're, they're paid per tree. He plants a lot of trees in a day, like I'm talking like 3,000 trees. Most in people, one day? In one day, 3,000. He's now planted something like 880,000 trees. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're just little saplings, but you think everyone, he's got to put a shovel in the ground and Anyways, it's, it's a marvelous that he is loving it. So last year, he came to us and he's saying, you know what, guys, I'm feeling really good. You know, I'm feeling ready to have a relationship again. So this is maybe four years after his breakup. And uh, he said, you know what, I'm, I'm really going to put myself out there and, and just be open to it. Well, this summer, he was planting in, in Alberta. Didn't he meet somebody right off the bat? And they... <laughs> And they shared common interests and a similar outlook on life. And she's smart, beautiful, and they've fallen in love, deeply in love. In fact, they're, they're talking of getting engaged. Um, they haven't got engaged yet. He, he wants to wait until they're back planting next summer. Hopefully they can do that with COVID and everything. But to my wife and I, we both prayed for him because we were worried that he would never find somebody and, and get established. So right now there's hope that he'll, he'll, he'll um, get married to this girl and have a family and be fulfilled in life. Amen. Wow, what a story. So that's, those are my shares for today. I've got more, <laughs> but I think my time is up. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> my bad, I thought you were done. <laughs> um, so... How about, is there anybody else that would like to, to speak? Because, okay, great. Would you ro use the roving mic? Jim's going to look after you. Great. Thanks, Thank everyone. You, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Praise the Lord. That just, that just reminds me, guys, no matter what you're going through life, no matter what age you're at, it doesn't matter. Trust God. He is faithful. He'll, he'll carry you through, and he's got an amazing plan laid out for you. Just sometimes we have to wait patiently. <laughs> Carol. There we go. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Uh-oh, hold on. Peter, our sound guy's trying to make it work. Okay. No, I think, should we get this? How far will this cord go? All right. Unless you want to come up here, Carol. Hey, give her a hand. All right, Carol, come on up. <laughs> I'll give this microphone to Jim and then maybe just give it to Peter to see if you can figure out what's going on. <laughs> I just thought it would be wrong when it's my special birthday today and the Lord's been so faithful to me all through the years and I have an opportunity to not get up and say how faithful he has been to me. It's 45 years since I asked the Lord into my life and he's never let me down yet. He is so faithful. I've had my bumps in the road just like all of you have, but he's always been faithful. He just needs us to call out to him. He just wants us to call out to him and to be obedient to him and to look around and see where we can be the blessing in someone else's life. I'm so thankful for Jesus and for what he's done in the last year and a half, the way he's provided for me in particular this, at this time and uh, the way he's provided with me for my, with my dear family and my friends. I give all the praise to Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
Thank you, Carol, for sharing. Okay, come on up. Mr. Eby. I forgot to say this on Friday night if you were here, but uh, Michaela and uh, Kendra were the ones responsible for making a beautiful hot chocolate and all the stuff on the uh, styrofoam cups with their sayings. But it was Jim Eby and his wife and family who own Eby Farm and they donated the chocolate milk to make it happen. So thank you, Jim, so much. Oh, and Ruth, thank <laughs> Anytime. you, Ruth. And Faith, thank you, Faith. <laughs> it seems there's a reoccurring faith, uh, theme this morning because when I was thinking about something to share, it was God's faithfulness that came through so loud and clear to me as well. Um, you know, this year hasn't been an easy year for any of us uh, with COVID and, and with all the things that are going on and all the tensions and the stress and all that. Um, but you know, God never wastes an experience, does he? Um, you know, we have to recognize that, that God allows these experiences for our own good, even though we can't always see it and understand what's what's happening and why these things are happening but anyways that's just kind of a little sideline but um i would say maybe this year more than anything i've learned um just to uh rest in god's faithfulness um not that i'm always perfect that's my wife um but <laughs> ruth ruth uh. <laughs> but just but just learning more and more to experience that rest in God's faithfulness. Um, there's been some challenges. Uh, we always have challenges. And um, there's been some really challenging decisions, challenging things that we've had to do. And, um, and yet, just learning to rest in God's faithfulness. And he comes through time and time again, you know, in ways that you um, are sometimes pretty amazed. And just learning that we don't have to carry these burdens. Jesus says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for us. And he does. And if we get that in our focus, that he cares for us, we don't have to carry these burdens. We don't have to carry all these heavy decisions ourselves. We can actually just give them to him and allow him to work and do his thing. And it's just kind of an echo, I think, of what Scott was, um, what Scott was sharing. But that would be my, my thing that I would like to share this morning, is just learning to rest in the faithfulness of God. Amen. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> I... Uh, Couple, two couples from our church, they couldn't make it this morning, but they shared with, they sent me their uh, notes here of how they want to give glory to God, declare all that God has done. And uh, Peter, also, I want to ask anybody on Zoom raising their hands, they want to say anything or any comments on YouTube? No? Okay. From Doug and Nancy, I thank God for who he is. I know that nothing happens that he does not allow and that he knows what is best for me. He has given us great health and daily opportunities to be witnesses for him by trying to allow him to take the lead in our lives and letting his light shine through us. All lives have periods of hardships, pain, grief, and yes, even anger. Goals, dreams, plans that get detoured or scrapped. But in all these things, there's so much to be grateful for. And in all capital letters, God is great, and the idea that he walks through life with me Holding my hand, forgiving me and loving me and knowing I am his now and forever is beyond being grateful. It leaves me spent and in awe of he who strengthens me. And from Gordon Sharon, Sharon and I have watched God move in our ministries with many church planting trainings, Muslims giving their lives to Christ, and many baptisms, including 61 just last month in a Muslim community. For those of you who don't know Gordon Sharon, Gord is one of our elders here at the church, and they're missionaries in Uganda, um, in South Sudan. And uh, so they minister to all kinds of uh, needy people down there. And so last month, 61 people, Muslim people, got baptized. That's a huge step of courage and faith and risk-taking that they took. So that's amazing. And she goes on, they go on. We also have seen God in our own lives, providing us a place to park our new home, a new home to stay in which just happened to be the same place uh, that the, part the trailer is at and the sale of our old home as well. In spite of all the struggles around us, we experienced God's faithfulness in huge ways, in so many ways. And we also want to thank Northside for their partnership, friendship, and fellowship. Happy New Year to all. Did you want to sing another song? Yeah, I think, I think now would be a good time to sing what the Lord has done in me. So, Jean, take it away on the intro. Let the weak say I am strong, let the poor say I am rich, let the blind say I can see, it's what the Lord has 
poor say I am rich, let the blind say I am track of time here. <laughs> wow. All these great stories of declaring what the Lord has done. Uh, I know that I want to close off with a prayer, but also um, Paul wants to share a few words from the treasurer's perspective to close off the year before we dismiss. But I really want to give still another opportunity. Is anybody else that wants to declare what the Lord has done? Come on up, Kendra. Um, I just want to say I'm in my uh, third year of college right now. Uh, it's been pretty tough. I've been online uh, for a while, and I'm just really blessed that the Lord has been able to um, give me really good friends I've met online. Um, sorry. Um, it's been really tough. I don't get to go and see anyone. I'm kind of stuck in my basement all day. Um, I'm just really happy that the Lord's been able to um, answer my prayers and he spots me with really good friends online and um, I've never even met them face to face. It's really funny. We talk for hours and we don't even turn our cameras on. Um, <laughs> um, but I've been praying and um, it's kind of a bittersweet thing with the pandemic and like stuff. Um, uh, they've extended online school now and it's actually been an answer to my like answer to my prayer because I can't get to school right now. I don't have a car to. <laughs> so I've been praying about that and um, I've been extended online, which is like a great thing for me right now. Um, so I just want to thank God for his blessings and for um, my family at Christmas. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Kendra. Thank you as well for being a great part of this church leadership team as you serve with the cafe ministry and social ministry. Uh, under Nancy's leadership. So thank you, Kendra, for sharing. Appreciate that. And may you have uh, great success in your schooling. Yes. Would you like to share? Oh, okay. <laughs> we have two people who want to share. Oh, Ken Amy is coming to speak. Okay, time to end the service. <laughs> Turn off the camera, please. <laughs> I'd just like to thank God for what he's done with our son and his eyesight. Mm -hmm. Um... He's had surgery, and uh, everything seems to be coming along quite well. And that is because of a lot of prayers from this church, and I really thank everyone here for that. Also, I'd like to thank the Lord for getting Sharon and I back together. Um, that's a real answer to prayer from a lot of people, and uh, I really thank God for that. 
Uh, one other thing, uh, on a lighter note, um, <clears throat> the other day I had to go up to Harriston in that when we had the snow and from there I went up to um, Durham area and uh, I wanted to get our son a sweatshirt. Uh, he and I go to watch The Rock play lacrosse down in Hamilton every game. Your grandson. Our grandson, I should say. And uh, it was just something special I wanted to do for him. And so I drove from Durham through some interesting snow. Uh, unfortunately, one woman was killed on the way down in an accident north of Mount Forest. Got down to the rock store, went into the store, and a gentleman came in shortly behind me. And uh, I looked at him and I said, your name wouldn't be Rosie by any chance, would it? And uh, he said, yes, he is. And that's the goalie of the rock. So I grabbed the sweatshirt for Cole and I had Rosie sign that sweatshirt. And the chances of that happening <laughs> on timing from the start of the traveling to being there when Rosie was there, that was just nothing but God working. And I praised him for that on Amen. the way home. Amen. So anyways, wish you all a great New Year's. Amen. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. Yes, Betty. You wanted to share? Uh, but we'll see now that Peter fixed that mic. Hold on, Betty. Test. There we go. Anybody who wants to help out Peter sometimes on sound, just go talk to him. <laughs> or the drums. I think I heard you say that too. Or the computer. Or the computer, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just thank the Lord that I'm able to come back to church after so many weeks. And, and I pray that we'll never take going to church or our eyes for granted. And I'm really praying about my eyes that they can do a miracle because this is really hard and I feel more for people now that have trouble with their eyes. So I thank God and I thank God for Roger and our family because I don't know where I'd be if I didn't have them. But it's so good to be back to church. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think I'd like to uh, close in prayer on that note, and then uh, are you going to be playing a song? Yeah, we're going to play How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Okay, so well, whatever, whatever, well, I'll close in prayer. Yeah. You sing that song, and then, Paul, you take over and dismiss at the end. Is that cool? Yep. <clears throat> Father, um, <laughs> we could stay here. All afternoon declaring what you have done in our lives I thank you for the good news that George has heard that <clears throat> he's cancer free He launched us into our time together and Betty closed our time together of sharing where she just declared how good it is that we shouldn't take for granted the, the gift of being able to gather together in church and also a prayer. I pray, Father, that you would touch her eyes. We just spoke about it again Friday night. Jesus, your first ever message says you've come to give sight to the blind. And you've done that. You've done that. Not just spiritually, but physically. And I pray right now, in the name of Jesus, your save, our Savior, your Son, the Healer, that you would touch Betty's eyes. With the little faith that we have right now, we're begging and pleading before your throne. They would touch her eyes and give her fullness of sight back again and touch her ears so she can hear so clearly and loudly everything. 
Thank you for this church. For we also heard it declared that because of this church family, in person, online, through texting, through phone calls, through visits at people's homes, through emails, <clears throat> we've been there for one another. For friends that we'll be able to connect with online, even in the midst of not being able to see each other at school, at college, you bless Kendra too. Thank you for how we've been encouraged this morning. And I know, Father, that as we, you heard these stories, giving you all the praise and glory, oh, it warmed your heart and put a smile on your face. It brought you great joy. For you have brought us such great joy. More than we can even imagine or ask or sometimes even remember. And this coming year, may we focus on all the good that you continue doing in our lives, all the ways that you will be faithful to us, individually, in our homes, and in and through this church. May you continue protecting this church from the enemy. May you continue blessing this church, your favor falling upon us. May you continue, Father, growing, maturing disciples of Jesus in and through this church, even new baptized believers as well. Oh, Father, for there are many in our neighborhoods, many right around this neighborhood, many at school that we know, workplaces that we know, that are yet to know you as Savior and Lord. And we ask that in 2022, we can declare what you have done in their lives by hearing their story of salvation, of transformation, and being a disciple of yours. Father, we love you. And we give our lives, our homes, our businesses, our schools, our leaders in this community, in the province, in this country. We give you this church in your very capable hands. And we say, do what seems best and right. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Steve. If everyone could stand, we're going to sing one final worship song. How deep the Father's love for us.
please be seated. So when a mother makes a request of me, it would not be a good idea for me to say no. <laughs> so I have a beautiful mother that made a request saying that her, her daughter wants to come and share a couple of words. Brianna, come on up. Hi, I'm Brianna. Um, so I've been struggling with anxiety and depression for almost a year now, but um, I was, it's just a long story, but um, I've been in and out of hospitals and been struggling um, for the last year now, um, but God has been so faithful to me, but um, I've been struggling with many, many health issues, um, with breathing and not breathing and um, a huge eye opener living in hospitals and being on breathing tubes, being forced to take medicine, not to take medicine. Um, but I've been struggling with a rare disease called EGPA, and there, there isn't a cure for it. But I know that the Lord has been so good to me to um, faithfully um, give me a um, not a cure, but a treatment sometime, um, hopefully next year. Um, but I've been just struggling just with um, not knowing who I was the last two years and I've lost my faith and um, struggled with um, depression but knowing not in the right place with God. Um, I left my family and I left my friends and I hurt a lot of people in my life but God really found me um, during the year of in the summer is just reaching out to me and telling me that I'm not alone and God is always with you even through your troubled times and to your hard times too and um I'm just so thankful that um he's brought me back to my family and friends and I'm getting involved into um I go to WMB and I'm involved in their worship team already and I'm involved in their young adults and I think the mic's off, is it? Sorry, <laughs> no, okay. Um, and um, I just thank, thank you everybody for my family and my friends for par praying for me. And um, um, I've just been through so much just um, with my ex to, through so much times what he's put me through, but um, I was faithfully not listening and not listening to his. God's prayers when through my times and through my troubles, but I am just so thankful that God has just brought me back um, to knowing him and knowing that he is real and I am not alone through anything. And I just want to share my favorite verse is Psalms 34, 4, and it's, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. And I just take that verse every day and everywhere and just remember that, yeah, God's alone. And I mean, God's strength is more powerful than anything in this world. So I just thank you. And I. Um, I am, I'm going to close. My name is Paul. I'm one of the elders here at the church as well. Um, I did have a couple of announcements for um, treasure, but they're inconsequential. Um, I just want to end with a song. I just went and told the worship team, just hang back. Um, I just really feel that the Lord has asked us to close with this song. Just listen to the words. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus 
Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is love Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows. Let's pray. We do speak the name of Jesus in this place. We lift him up. And Jesus, as you said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. So we pray that that is the testimony of our past our present, and the future as we enter 2022. We pray that the name of Jesus would be proclaimed in this place, that every addiction would start to break, that there would be hope, that there would be freeling, feeling, freedom, that there would be healing, and that strongholds would come down. Again, we pray over fear and anxiety and depression. And we declare the goodness of our God. You are a good God. And what you do is good. Father, we know that in all things you work together for the good of those who are called according to your purpose. So I pray, Father, whatever people are going through, any struggles, any strongholds, that you would turn it into good because you make all things beautiful in your time. We'll be careful to give you the praise as a church family. We'll be, give, be careful to give you the praise as individuals. And we'll be, give you, be careful to give you the praise in our own families as well. We pray all these things in Jesus' name and God's people said. Amen.
Amen. Amen. God bless you.